What? She was just there. The house was here, the farm was here, all gone. The government decided that this was the spot for an RAF station to be built. That station has earned a unique place in British aviation history and was first known as RAF Watersham. Watersham, both sides of the fence, the documentary marks 80 years of the station, featuring first-hand accounts from people who've helped shape its history. I was posted to Watersham a week before the war started. In 1939, Blenheim bombers from Watersham made the first bombing raid of the Second World War. Wartime, uh, flying one of these at night, bombed up en route somewhere, must have been a nightmare. This was a heck of a day to be starting a war. In 1943, RAF Watersham was officially handed over to the U.S. Army Air Force. We just started setting things up and getting it prepared for training. I didn't realize that the base was attacked as frequently as it was. Following the Second World War, Watersham played a vital defense role in the Cold War era. I had four aircraft that were armed and cocked ready to go. If the Hooter went to two o'clock in the morning. It was quite a business to go from dead asleep to airborne in a very few minutes. Uh, you could empty the aircraft of fuel within about 15 minutes. My engine exploded and quit. My mother came out and said Earl's been killed. Well, we just prayed that it didn't happen to you. The station was also home to the world famous Black Arrows. We were fully operational fighter command and there was no excuse. Oh, we've got an air show on. And we meet other users of the airfield past and present. Amazing views. Today, Watersham remains one of the largest operational flying stations in Europe. <laughs>